guys, so today I'm going to be doing a super exciting book talk about the Delirium series by Lauren Oliver. That is a trilogy with Delirium, Pandemonium, and Requiem. And I absolutely loved this series. I know it's kind of outdated. The series came out a couple years ago. I know that like everybody else has already read this series, but I just got to it in this past I do week. have to say I really enjoyed the series. I was in the midst of a huge reading slump and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna pick up Delirium. And then I ended up reading the whole trilogy in a span of a week. So I'm very excited to bring this book talk to you guys today to inform you about the series if you have not read it yet and to talk about it if you have. So I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a non-spoiler summary and then we're gonna talk detail. So the Delirium series is a dystopian series and this this book follows a young girl named Lena. She's 17 and she lives in this world, which I think is just the United States, like bunches of years later. I'm really not sure what the amount of years that have passed since you know, current date have been, but you know, it's farther into the future and they live in this society where love is a disease. In this society that this series takes place in, it is known that love is like the root of all evil things and it's just no good for people and people will have such more successful lives if they just don't have love and compassionate feelings. So when everybody turns 18 years old, they get this surgery done that makes them immune to love. In this story, Lena lives with her aunt and uncle and her cousins. Her mother committed suicide due to the disease disease and due to the surgeries not working on her. Her mother got the surgery three times and she still felt compassionate feelings and she was diseased so to speak and she killed herself. So Lena is very nervous that that will be hereditary and pass on and that Lena won't be cured by the disease. And when she meets this boy named Alex, she wants to steer clear of him because obviously Lena just wants to get the surgery, wants to live her perfect normal life, but obviously that's not what we're gonna get with this series. There's a lot of stuff going on in this. It gets crazy, it gets fun, it gets scary, it gets intense, it gets insane, it's amazing. I love the whole series. I gave Delirium 5 out of 5 stars, Pandemonium 4 out of 5 stars, and Requiem 4.5 out of 5 stars. And I really recommend it to any of you that like dystopian, obviously, because it is a dystopian series, but if you are a die-hard contemporary fan as myself, and you've never really read a dystopian series, I think this is a perfect series to have to branch out, you know, into a different genre like dystopian if you've not read anything from it before because I'm just branching out myself into the dystopian genre and I thought this was a really good one because it still had, you know, romantic aspects because of the whole love situation so I thought it was a really great series for me to start out with in my dystopian journey and I was right because I absolutely loved it. So I definitely recommend it to you guys if you have not checked out a dystopian series before and you're looking for something, Delirium is the perfect series to if read. If you that are interested in this series have not read it yet and you want to know some more information, feel free to comment down below and ask me questions. Just be careful because there might be spoilers down there or you can tweet me on my Twitter at LovelyLikeLaura. If you have any questions about the series before going in and reading it, if you want to know anything else that I didn't explain, then go ahead and ask me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But for now, we're going to start with the spoiler section. So as long as you've read all three books, then you're safe to continue. Okay guys, so let's get started with Delirium. Delirium was my favorite out of the three. I really, really enjoyed it. I liked Lena right off the bat. I thought she was a super likable character and I could like deal with her. She wasn't annoying. I hate annoying characters that have like a series. Like I can't deal with that. But Lena was good. I enjoyed how love was a disease and stuff. I've never read anything like that. So I thought it was super interesting, obviously. And that's why I picked it up. When Lena is at her examination, when she's getting all her stuff checked to find out what she's gonna be ranked when she gets paired and all that jazz and she sees the boy above on the examination deck or whatever it's called and it's Alex and he winks at her and she's just like I've like barely talked to a boy ever and I thought that was so funny because she's like it's so funny to see how they're like boys oh no I can't <laughs> like it's so funny because like they don't want to catch anything. I liked the dynamic between Lena and Hannah. I, I did enjoy Hannah in the first book. Uh, we'll get to my feelings about her towards Requiem, but I did like her in the beginning. I thought it was interesting that she was the one that was kind of like branching out and being like, oh look it, it's illegal music, and oh look it, this is an illegal party, you want to go? And I had a feeling it was going to play out like that. I didn't think Lena was going to be the one to just like start finding things out on her when own. the story starts out, Lena's like this super obedient, never questions anything, always follows the rules type of girl. And then when Hannah like tells her, oh, let's go to this secret party and let's go talk to this person and let's go say hi to boys and stuff. And then Lena's just like kind of like, mm -mm, I don't know, I can't do that. And then she meets Alex and he's cured cured and she starts talking to him and she's like it's okay he's cured I'm fine I can talk when to him. Lena goes to like the second party I think and she wants to go warn Hannah that the regulators are coming and she has to go tell her so she can get out of there and be and safe. And then she gets bit by the dog and Alex drags her into that room and then he gets her into the shed and he's like wrapping her leg and stuff and up to this point we see Lena as this super obedient super you know well-behaved girl and then Alex kisses her 
and then they're just like kissing and they're just like hanging out every day and I thought that was a little bit out of character I mean I understand that they're, pro they're probably trying to say like Lena's like this but when you have love everything changes and I get that but I thought it was a little bit too much uh, just because Lena was like so like this and then Alex kisses her and then she's just like oh so I'm like oh my god Alex and da 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 and whatever so I thought that was a little bit different and she just changes her opinions like so fast in the first book but other than that I thought it was fine I was like really happy because I really liked Alex and we'll get to that too about my feelings towards Julian versus Alex and Pandemonium and Requiem and stuff like that but I really like Alex. Okay so other things that happened in this book you know we see with her mom her mom didn't actually commit suicide and Alex thinks that she was in the jail and they show up and yeah she was in the jail because of the necklace and I thought that was crazy and I was excited for that to play out in the next two books, which it did obviously, so we'll talk about that in a second. Um, I thought that was great. I really liked Alex and Lena's relationship, how it kind of progressed and how they really did love each other and it was so sad at the end, you know, when everything plays out and she's about to get her surgery, but then she gets caught. I was so heartbroken when the regulator showed up and split up Alex and Lena and took her away and like she got like pinned to her bed and she couldn't leave and her surgery got moved up so she could get it soon and get rid of the disease and Alex has no way of knowing this and she finally gets Hannah to give him a note and he finds out and he shows up and they try to escape and then she gets over the border and he doesn't he stays there and dies okay and now I was really upset because I liked Alex a lot I'm not really sure why I know that I've heard people say like why do you like Alex so much like he was barely in the book like he wasn't that important he didn't do that many amazing things he didn't progress that well as a character I don't know I just when I like a character I'm like they're mine. They're my baby. I love them. I protect them. They're my everything. Even if they have like one scene, I'm like, oh my god, this is my character. Like Alex was my character that I loved. So when I came to read Pandemonium, I was like, so if Alex is dead, like, I don't want to read the book. It's kind of weary because Alex was like my fave in the first book and I was like, if he's not in Pandemonium, is it worth it? So me being me, I start going like this and I'm like, looking for like then Alex says so just to have a reassuring thought that he's alive and I just I'm so annoying I had to I flip to the last page and see that Alex shows up on the last page I can read the book now I'm good so I start pandemonium and I really did like pandemonium but it was my least favorite out of the three books I was very confused at first when it started off having the now and then the then chapters um, I got it that she got to the wilds but then it goes and she's in New York City and I was just like, is this like a dream state? Like, what's going on? It took me like 40 pages in to fi finally figure out that this was like the flashback of when she first got to the wilds and then what's happening right now in New York when she got there with the Raven and Tack. So I finally figured that out, but it took me a while. I think it should have been a little bit more explained maybe. I loved how it kind of showed her getting used to her new life in the I wild. I think that it was really great that they had her just be with Raven and Tack and all these new people in the wilds instead of having Alex, you know, survive and get over the border because it gave her a chance to kind of adapt on her own. I feel like if Alex had followed her into the um, wilds, then she would have just been really dependent on him because, like, you grew up here, you know everything, and, like, no, like, I'm glad that she got to go by herself and actually like learn how to hunt, learn how to, you know, do stuff, learn how to get water and all that stuff on her own. I thought that was very important. So then we get to the part where it's like the big speech thing where uh, Julian's dad is supposed to be talking and all the scavengers show up and freak out and grab Julian and Lena's job is to like follow Julian. So she follows Julian into this tiny room where they both get captured. Good job, Lena. Good job. You had to follow Julian. You had to obey Raven attack. And I mean, I get it. She's new. She's like, I need to do what they say, whatever, but she follows them. And then they're stuck in this room for like ever until finally Lena realizes that she has the clues to get out She gets out and her and Julian literally almost die Literally almost die. I was like waiting for one of them to die because honestly I was so done I was like what is going on? Like why is this the whole book? The whole book was just them trying to get out of this confined space and go through the alleys and go through everything And they finally get out but like so obviously we know like Julian's place and how he's like the father of like the founder of whatever it's called and um she's like so anti like girls he's like I can't talk to you I'm not cured yet I can't do that and he's so like straight laced and then we get to uh, you know Lena like being like the invalid type of girl which is totally how she's not during delirium like Julian is the delirium Lena and I thought it was weird how fast he like just kind of let it down and like progressed and like fell in love with her and honestly I didn't have a problem with Julian like there was nothing that I was like oh Julian I don't like him but I just like Alex and I was rooting for Alex still during pin money I was waiting for Alex to show up I was like sorry like she's taken like he's dead but she's taken but he's not really dead but I just really liked Alex so I was like Julian like 
mm, like no sorry he's like you, know, you can like be here and like you can come with her to the invalids after he escapes his surgery you know and she freaks out and goes um and gets him and they leave and go back into the wilds but like I didn't want a romance to kindle, which it did, but you know, I didn't really want I really it. want to know you guys' opinions on Raven and Pandemonium because I was kind of like fed up with her. I was like, we get it, like you're the one in charge, whatever. But like not telling Lena that she was sending her on this journey with Julian this whole time and Tack being like, maybe we should tell her and um, Raven being like, no, no, she can do fine. Like I was so pissed. Like Raven honestly, like what? Like I was so mad. And then, you know, her mom, the whole thing with her mom, like being the person that escorts her out of the to the van or whatever. Like I was crazy. Uh, so much happened. I don't even know. So then they escape, yada, yada, yada. And then they go and they're back in the wild. And then Alex shows up and he's just like there. And he's like, so annoying. Like what? And then Julian's there and he's like, promise we'll always be together. Like promise me to, you know, Lena. And then Alex is like, don't believe her. And I was just like, whoa, what's going on with Alex? So immediately I like go get Requiem. Let's start talking about Requiem. Um, yeah, Requiem got crazy. Requiem was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. Okay. So to start, I'm going to talk about Alex for a second. Alex in the first book was this kind, loving, supportive guy from the wilds, had a rough kind of start obviously living there, being an invalid I guess, and just kind of like knows what's up. He shows up in Requiem and he's like the worst person ever. So mean to Lena, doesn't even give her a chance to explain what's been going on. Why did he even show up to their group? Like that makes no sense to me. Like how did he get to their group? Like why would he even do that? Like it makes no sense. It makes no I don't even know what to say about Alex. He was just so annoying, like, the whole book. But we'll talk about him at the end and everything that happens. But this book was alternating between Lena and Hannah's point of view, which I thought was interesting, but kind of unnecessary. Um, Hannah, you know, had got the surgery, so she's just kind of like this dull version of herself now. And we can see that the effects of the surgery didn't totally work. She obviously still has, like, sympathizer-type you know, actions obviously with helping Grace and whatever. But, you know, we see her, we see her living her life and we see her with her rich husband that sucks. And we see her, you know, just doing stuff and almost getting married. We don't get a conclusion for Hannah, which is really annoying because why did, was she in the book? Like, why did she have half of the book dedicated to her when like nothing happens in the end? Like she runs away from the burning house and then nothing happens. Like we don't even know what happens. It's so annoying. So I don't really like Hannah um, when I read this book. Obviously we find out that Hannah is the reason that Lena and Alex got caught just because she was jealous. I know some people felt bad for Hannah, but honestly, she had everything, and Lena didn't really have anything. Like, Lena had gone through so much in her lifetime, and Hannah's this, like, spoiled rich kid, and she really has to rat out her best friend. Like, what kind of best friend would do that, honestly? It made me so mad, because in the third book, we find out, too, that she had things with other boys, too, but it wasn't, like, real love. But, like, so what? Like, calm down. I know some people, like, feel bad for her, they pity her, but I don't. Like, I honestly was so mad when I found out that it was Hannah that ratted them out, because... Of all people, like, of all people, that really is unfortunate, and I was really upset about that. But I guess at the end, she did kind of show remorse even after getting the surgery, and she did help her and got her to Grace, you know, and everything, so that was okay. And um, just to talk more about the ending of the book in a whole, because, I mean, there's so much plot stuff that happened, obviously, them trying to break through the fence, them breaking through the fence, and then what? nothing like nothing happened. She gets reconnected with her mom, something that happens, which was great, and I like to see that she was with Julian most of the time. He tried to say that he loved her, but she kind of just like, was like, eh. um, and then we find out that Alex has been stupid the whole time and he actually still does love her, but he thinks that he has to let her go so she can be free or whatever the heck that story meant that he left her when he like left. Um, and he says something like, you know, he wants her to be happy, but he can't be with her. So he loves her so much. He's going to let her go. But like, you don't need to do that. Like, it made no sense to me. Um, it was kind of annoying. And then at the end, he just, like, kisses her, and she goes and gets Grace, and it's fine. And then the wall is being broken through. And then the book ends. Like, the book just ends. Like, we don't hear anything about what happens. We don't hear if they, like, did something successful, and, like, there's gonna be, like, a whole thing, and, like, Portland is gonna be free. No, we don't hear about that. We don't hear about if she's with Alex or if she ends up with Julian, which we can assume she ends up with Alex, but... He was so terrible to her the whole book. I almost want her to end up with Julian and Alex was my favorite. So I don't even know what to think about that. We don't know what happens with Hannah with her wedding. She just like runs away from her burning house. And then what? Like 
honestly, I'm really upset that there's no epilogue, there's no novella, there's nothing. Like, this is the end of the series, and it was such a good series. To end like this on such a random note was just uncalled for. <laughs> like, I was expecting another chapter when I turned the page. I was like, oh, and then it was like, read an excerpt from Lauren Oliver's Panic. I was like, no. No, like, she needs to write another book. She needs to just write, like, a bonus chapter and, like, post it on her website or something so we can all just get a little bit more satisfactory out of this because I feel so unsatisfied. The ending is not complete. But I did give this book 4.5 stars because it kept me so entertained, the whole book. I was loving the book up until, like, here. Even the Hannah parts, she annoyed me, but I was still kind of enjoying some of her chapters. But up until here, when we find out that, like, we don't find out anything, and then the book ends, but... I don't think that a book deserves to go down like three stars just because the ending was unfortunate because you know if you were treating this just as another book in the series and just pretending that it was going to be continued someday I would have gave it five stars but 4.5 because nothing is happening after this and I know there's four novellas there's an Annabelle a Hannah a Raven and an Alex and I just ordered the like bind up of three of those and it should be here any day now but I'm going to be reading those but I know that those would take place before the ending of this book so we're not going to find out anything from those but I still want to read them but I don't know guys let me know what you thought of the ending I heard some people being like you gave it a 4.5 oh my god you're so generous or some people being like I actually liked the ending so I want to hear all about you guys' thoughts I know this video was so all over the place I probably didn't cover half of the things that I wanted to but I'm just so scatterbrained I read the series in a week so all the books feel like one to me so I can't remember everything I've taken a couple days to try to like get my thoughts into order but my thoughts are still a mess. So yes, I did enjoy the series. I liked it. I like Lena. I like everything. It's just that ending, man. It just kind of like threw me off, I guess. I had heard things in the past that like the third book ruins the series, but I liked the third book up until the last chapter when we find out nothing. Like honestly, an epilogue. Just an epilogue we need, like honestly. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this book talk. Let me know everything about this series that you liked, your favorite parts, your least favorite parts, your opinions on everything that I talked about in the comments below. Or if there's a certain part in one of the books that you want to hear my opinions on, um, let me know in the comments below because I might have left something like super important out. Like, I don't know, like right now I'm like, I think I covered everything and then I'm gonna like finish recording and mean like, wait, I didn't talk about this huge part. But you know, just let me know if there's something like that down below and I'll get back to you and let you guys know all my thoughts. You can tweet me and we can talk about the series if you want. I really loved the series overall though and I'm so happy that I finally got around to reading it. I picked up the series last year and I was planning on reading it for like book two -bathon, and I never got to it so I'm so happy that I finally decided to pick it up and it got me out of my reading slump so I'm very pleased with the series even though the ending sucked. I mean we'll get over it. Everybody does. So yes I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already and you'd like to see more videos from me and I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye. I need your love, I need your time. When everything's wrong, you make it rise. I feel